it's it's so important to to for people to hear stories that are outside of what society prescribes to us as normal and real and possible mm -hmm. so um yeah I, I would so so stories like like the one that you told me about are are, are medicine and nourishment to me uh so i'd love to just to listen and and um hear your story sure so um, my son was in college and he was 22 years old and he was diagnosed with stage four testicular cancer. It was one of the fastest growing cancers um, and how his particular cancer was diagnosed was that it starts in, in him. It started in the left testicle, uh, metastasized to the kidneys, the lungs, and then it goes to the brain. So they gave him six months to live. Um, it went to two different oncology places. The first, uh, the, the first idea was the doctors were going to open them up surgically from stern to groin, um, pull out all the tumors and then spray them down with chemo. And then I think it was 15 weeks of chemo and followed by radiation. The second oncology place said, no, nah, we're going to do 15 months of chemo. Then we'll open you up, sternum to groin, pull out any tumors are left, and then we'll do another 15 rounds of chemo. So that's kind of what my son was looking at, and he didn't want to do it. Uh, fortunately, about two weeks before he was diagnosed, I'd gone to a seminar. I don't know if, if you or anybody out there knows uh, Thomas Levy. And Thomas Levy is an MD based out in Colorado at the time, and he actually lost his medical license for curing cancer with vitamin C. So I called him up and he said, oh, yeah, that's no problem. I'll give you the recipe. So he said, look, you're going to um, give him 50 grams of vitamin C in an IV. I want you to run it for let the drip, allow it to drip for three and a half hours. And then when you get to the very end of the IV, I want you to add in one cc of glutathione. You're going to have to do this now every other day for three weeks and he should be just fine. So we've got the CT scan, we've got the uh, the blood test. So we uh, at those times you couldn't really get a vitamin C. Back in 2006, it was tough around Spartanburg. You couldn't get a vitamin C IV. But um, a friend of mine found me the vitamin C, and a, and another friend uh, hooked my son up. And I must say, I've been practicing holistic medicine now for over 35 years. I didn't know it much about cancer. So I was really scared. And this is my boy. Um, but we we went ahead. My son went ahead. We did, we did the three and a half weeks of vitamin C IV. And then my son went back to the hospital and they re did another CT scan, and did a blood test, and there were no tumors, no sign of cancer anywhere. Wow. I know. Yeah. I mean, it was... I mean, stage four is basically like, like, you know, you're going to die basically right. if you're stage four. Right. Yeah. They gave maybe, tons. yeah. So right now, 17 years later, he's hiking the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. You know, the, the, I mean, there's a, there's a huge disadvantage, though, to this type of therapy, which is that there really isn't any money in it. You know, vitamin C yeah. costs, cost pennies, a few dollars, maybe for that amount of vitamin C. Yeah, in uh, 2008, it costs $8 an IV. Yeah. Chemotherapy at that time, we were looking at $1.2 million. Yep. And the time so, it was off. you know, this kind of thing is really bad for the economy. Right. And, uh, and, and but, but, you know, I'm kind of joking here. But the other thing, why is it so hard for people to accept this possibility? It's, it, it's because, I tell yeah, tell me, tell me your perspective. Oh. Yeah. Um, cancer. Uh, one thing I, I and I've treated so many people for years. Uh, and one of my first things I would tell my patients would be, OK, so first of all, we got to change the language because cancer is a morphic field of, of death. It means death. And it's been advertised that way. People have been marched off. You know, this is it. We're going to go after it with the chemical poisons and we're going to do surgeries. And and but, you know, cancer is bad. That's how we look at it. The way I look at cancer, first of all, I tell people we're going to, all it is, is, is severe inflammation. 
So there's something here. It could be heavy metals. It could be a virus. It could be a fungus. It could be a million and one things. It could be emotional. But something has caused your body to go into a severe inflammatory state. So we're going to find the cause, and then we're going to we're going to uh, uh, treat the cause, and then the inflammation will go away. So we got to remove the word cancer. But unfortunately, it's a morphic field. It's a it's another word for death all over the world because of the sales pitch that's been going on for so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the word. Does so that, it's, does that answer the question? I don't know. If that yeah, I, I, have, I have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's like a morphic field, like you were saying. Yeah. And and it it's a receptacle for our the projection of all of our fear, right? And our helplessness. Yes. And and it is also the story like yours is very challenging because it it starts to disintegrate the the entire worldview that contains cancer in that role, serving that function, serving that that. Um, uh, you know, as a receptacle of our fear, uh, yeah. as a projection screen for our fear. And if what you say is true, if that actually happened, it means that everything that we know is wrong. It I means that, that institutions that that are venerated and revered by society with a quasi-religious faith called science, called medicine, that yeah. they are they are they have an unfirm an infirm foundation and if this is true what if if your story is true and, and people have so many ways to uh exclude it from the circle of truth uh you know it was coincidence it's just an anecdote the diagnosis was wrong etc cetera, etc cetera. they've all kinds it must have been something yeah and if you show them the cat scans they'll be like well you know that doesn't prove anything and it's just uh, N of one, it's just one case. I mean, they'll have many. Oh, they, yeah, I'm sorry. They'll have many defenses to prevent this disruptive data point from entering their delusion, which is really what it is. It's a delusion. Yeah, it, the oncologist called me up and he said, "Where this is? This is a, a Monday morning." He says, "Calls me at my office and he says, where's your son?" I said, "What do you mean, where's my son?" He said he's supposed to be here for chemotherapy. I said, but there's no sign of cancer. The second CT scan. He said, what? So he, he, he goes, I've got him on speakerphone. I've got a bunch of patients in the waiting room. So I put him on speakerphone and I said, uh, he comes back and he says, well, I don't care what that CT scan says. And I don't care what the blood test says. Your boy still has cancer. And I said, but how do you prove cancer? He said, well, what's a CT scan and a blood test? And I said, so that's how you find cancer. And there's no more tumors and there's and the blood test is clear, but you're saying he still has cancer. And you say, I don't care if you've been giving him paprika, that boy still has cancer and he needs to get in here. And I said, he's not coming. Wow. And and he said, well, then I'm going to have you arrested for child endangerment. And I said, he's 22 years old. So he's made his own decision. And he said, well, then, Dr. Kevill, you're a murderer. You're going to be in charge of murdering your son. I mean, so even I, the doctor didn't want to believe I what the CT the CT scan says. Your boy has cancer, right? But when the CT scan said he had, you know, it's a wow. So when the first CT scan, you have cancer. The second CT scan, nothing's on it, but you still have cancer. It's like what? Wow. But but see, they don't even they can't believe it either, right? Like you can't believe it because it it it's painful, like it's literally painful and and devastating to believe right. something that invalidates your your self conception, your identity, your career, uh, your status in society, uh, your financial income. You know, if 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 cancer can be treated like that, then what does this man's career mean? You know, oh, it, exactly. So, so he takes it as as a direct assault and therefore yeah. responds irrationally. Right. Yeah. And this uh, is this is, yeah. you know, this is like, you know, it's it's easy to to um you know say that about this poor oncologist. Yeah. But you know, what what yeah. for me it's an invitation to look at how do I do that? What what data points will I just exclude because it doesn't fit 
the story of self and world that I have constructed? And how, who do I group around me to reinforce those stories? Because really, this is, you know, we're, we're, we're really bringing good. this into the sanity project. And what we're, that oncologist was insane. And it was a normalized insanity that probably his entire department would back him up on. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. I had a conversation with an oncologist once. This was about 10 years ago. And I did not know him. He did not know me, but he did say he was an oncologist. So I said, and I and I didn't say this is a patient, but it was a patient of mine. And I said, look, this friend of mine has uh, had cancer, breast cancer. They removed her breast. She did the chemo, the radiation. Then it came back five years later. So they moved the breast, chemo, radiation. Then it went to her stomach and her liver. Uh, sorry about that. More chemo, more radiation. So I, I won't. I won't take too much time telling. But so so I said so. So now you know they told her well call hospice, but we could do this other experimental chemo radiation. So she comes to me. So I said, in your case, what would you do about that? Well, he said, you know, my partners and I, we had our own oncology center. And if it doesn't, we, our motto was, if it didn't get it the first time, why go back? Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't make any money. So we got hired by the big oncology center. And they say chemo and radiate till they're dead. Mm -hmm. So, And I, I looked at him and I said, how do you sleep at night? Oh, I sleep just fine. I mean, everybody's got to die. And I've got two kids in college and I got a beach house and I've got a boat and car payments. Yeah. And, you know, we all have a job and we all got to pay our bills. Right. So it's just exactly what you said a, a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. It's, you know. Right. So here we are. This is that's the way the world is. So if yeah. you are a renegade, if you are a skeptic, if you are a doubter, you are not merely one of Freud's discontents of civilization you were what looks like insanity to the conventional society is actually sanity and your rejection of what so many people take for granted like yeah if you have cancer of course you go to the oncologist i mean it is the pressure is intense i know people who are who have been you know, eating organic food, alternative medicine, et cetera, et cetera, yoga, et cetera, for decades. When they yes. get that diagnosis, they default right back to without to, a doubt. Like and their their parents, their relatives, their friends, like, oh my God, you're not gonna, you know, do the chemo. It's really Bye. the pressure is intense. So so thank you for providing this antidote, um uh Kate, to, to this to the story. Yeah. By the well, um my son also did Gerson therapy too, so a lot of juicing and everything. But do you mind uh, if I say one more thing about yeah, please. the whole experience? Yeah. Walking into the oncology center was a multi-million dollar lobby and beautiful couches and a waterfall. And this is how we're going to help you, right? Everything's so beautiful, beautiful artwork. And just, uh, and then... And then uh, what else was I going to say? And then we have the holistic that gosh, we don't have any money. <laughs> we, we're doing the best I can to help you. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. But anyway, it's kind of about. Oh, and then and then they have the sales pitch. So it's sales 101 is I'm going to scare you. Hmm. And then I'm going to tell you a solution. And then I'm going to tell you that we have to do it right away, like right now. You have no time to make a decision because because you're dying. Wow. So that's another way that it happens too. You know, the fear is used. So somehow, and I've been working on this for many many years. Is just just explain to people, change the verbiage to inflammation. Talk about feeding the body. You know, change it up. Like there was a dentist, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, who cured himself of pancreatic cancer. Nobody does that. And he wrote a book um, that my son and I read. And one of his first statements was, cancer is easier than the common cold. Mm. So that's where we want to go. Just, just keep putting that out there instead of the death 